What's going on, chess lover? This is uh, Maurice Bishop, and today I want to share with y'all three in-game puzzles just to get your mind going. Now, it's going to seem uh, maybe easy um, for y'all at first, but I'm going to start y'all easy so that, you know, when the next video comes, it will become harder and harder and harder. So I just want to get y'all mind thinking on end games a lot of times people play uh opening moves and they study openings a lot or whatever but in all actuality um it's actually better to study the end games first before you study the opening and the reason being is a lot of times when people play openings they want to play sharp lines and everything but a lot of times your opponent doesn't play the same variation as you would like them to play. So now you actually have to play chess. And most of the time, or 90% of the time, um, when you play against your opponent, you're going to reach an end game. And the end game is where it actually counts. You know, so just always remember that, though. So study end games and everything. Because the thing is, if, if you could if you could play a strong end game, like if you have the knowledge of the uh, the end game, then uh you'll be able like when you play openings and everything, you'll be able to decipher you know isolated pawns, backward pawns, and you know you'll be able to start playing how you would want to play as if you was playing in the end game because you're gonna judge it by your pawn structures and where your king is at, you know things like that. That's how a lot of grandmasters play. That's how they think. You know that's what they do. So. The, the openings that I always tell y'all, Black Line, L Shot System, I choose those openings because I know that um, they have a big advantage when it comes to end games because of the pawn structure, because of, you know, where my king is at, you know, simple as that. So um, I just want to share with y'all, you know, a couple of uh, end game puzzles. All right. So the first one, I want y'all to look at this. Um, what would be the best move for white to play? As you can see, you know, this rook is um, guarding this pawn from getting to a8. Obviously, if he uh, pushes, you know, the rook will take. Uh, also, we have another second uh, pass pawn where the king is actually behind um, this pawn. So, how can white actually force a win uh, in this position? Uh, if y'all need to pause the video, pause the video. Uh, I'll give y'all five seconds to uh, think this over. All right. Just look at the whole board. Just just look at it. Just look at all possibilities. All right, y'all. So uh, you got to think like this, all right? So when you look at this position, uh, yes, we have two pass points. But also, when, when you're in a position like this, you want to check out the... I'm sorry, y'all. I'm over here. I don't know what's going on. Uh, when y'all looking at this position, you want to check out the uh, the distance of the king. And when I mean distance, I mean um, look look how far away this king is away from this pawn. Obviously, he would have to do the funny part because he can't even get to this square because this pawn is blocking it. So it, it'll take a while before he can um, get to that piece. But also look at the distance of um, your piece as well, meaning your rook. Obviously, the rook is going to have to move somewhere in order to get an advantage. What would be the best move? The best move will actually be um, rook f6. Uh, let me delete this one real quick. Rook f6 would be the best move. Why is this the best move? This is the best move because uh, if rook f6 comes here, right? If the rook decides to take on a7, then we have check. And y'all probably like, dang, we just giving away all the pawns. Well, that's the whole point. Um, if he goes king catches d7, we go rook f7, and this rook is lost. Now, if it was the other way around, if he goes king e7, well, that's just really, really a blunder because then you get your queen with a check and you win the game. Let's look at other possibilities. The other possibilities if he goes rook f6 and the king decides to go king e7 to block him. Well, it doesn't matter because we'll just get a queen anyway. Of course, the king will be forced to take. And after rook f8 check, if he goes king c7, we have queen a8. And obviously, this rook is going to be forced to take this queen. If he doesn't take it, it doesn't matter. Um, white is going to lose. I, I mean, not white. <laughs> I said white going to lose. White is going to win. Black is going to lose. Um, 
yeah so um so just pay attention to that and it's like certain tactics you just gotta uh pay attention to um just just be um uh, just always remember that y'all like if you have an a game y'all get poems like these you know just remember you know the schooler you know always use the schooler as an advantage uh in this type of position because we all know um even even if the rook doesn't decide to take and even if the king doesn't decide to come here let's say the rook decides just to go rook a5 baby right it doesn't even matter he's going to lose automatically because um rook f8 check and then obviously if he takes or if he doesn't take this corner is going to automatically push and white is going to win so all right so that's the second puzzle i mean the first puzzle <laughs> All right, look at this second puzzle, guys. Um, white to move. How can you actually, uh, like, what would y'all do in this position? It's white to move. Like I said, the end game. What, what would y'all do in this position? I give y'all, um, like I said, five seconds, you know, to think about it. And uh, if y'all need to pause the video, pause the video. Just really look at the position. Look at everything. Uh, look at the pawn structure. Look at, you know, pay attention to the isolated pawns. Um, this one right here, we have um, a potential weak point here. Uh, these are okay. Um, look at your rook files. Look at your pieces. Look at everything, y'all. And what will be the best move for white in this position? All right, guys, so if y'all found this move, this will catch your C7. <laughs> now, it looks like y'all just giving up a piece, but there's a reason for this. Uh, if the bishop decides to take, we have rook B7. So now that we're hitting um, this bishop, but uh, we'll be potentially um, hitting this knight. It doesn't matter where this knight goes. This bishop will be lost. Um, if the bishop move anywhere, this will be lost. Now, y'all may think, well, shoot, he could just take. Well, that's true. Let's say we'll take this one. Rook catches d7 check. Um, if he takes, we'll take back. And um, it doesn't matter if the king moves or if the rook decides to block it. He can block all he wants. We'll take, he'll take, and then he captures the bishop. And now white will have an advantage because white has one two three four we have one two three four five we actually have an advantage because we have actually no um enemy in front of us you know so but it might go like you know this um i'm sorry y'all uh, king d3 maybe uh king c5 and um in this position we can actually go um a3 but um white is gonna win because all he has to do is uh keep pushing he could just keep pushing uh his pawns up and white will have an advantage in the uh the game or in the zen game um and you're probably like how, how did you think of this move well you also got you got to think of this though uh, we know that a rook is powerful on a seventh rank. Like we know that, you know what I mean. So um, we know that it, we know that's true, and and as I said, y'all just gotta keep looking at, um, like I said, different tactics and other end game books. Um, and honestly, y'all, uh, what's uh, a book that's uh, really keeping me sharp in my end games and stuff is this book right here. Uh, chess calculation training uh, volume two end games the first volume was about uh, middle games and everything and um you know certain tactics there and strategic uh information so um yeah but this is the one that i i use uh i look at this every now and then it's, it's a lot of and this this book is pretty thick and everything so it has a lot of puzzles for end games and everything, which is something that I love. So I have a couple of uh, end game puzzles. So I like to keep myself sharp in end game. Uh, but yeah, but the reason why Bishop catches on C7, y'all, is because 
Uh, Y'all know the principle, if I read my system by Aaron Nizovich, uh, he always talks about uh, the seventh rank. If you put a rook on the seventh rank, it's, it's very powerful. And you can utilize that by uh, getting an advantage. Uh, that's why I took this pawn, um, bishop captures, and then rook b7. Um, and like I said, it, it doesn't matter, man, like what he does. Like, like I told y'all before, he can go knight f8. It doesn't matter. We're just going to take this with a check. We just got a pawn. Uh, and another rule of the end game is um, if you can attack a pawn so that your pawn can uh, be a free pass pawn, like with no uh, opponent in front of them, then do so. And that's pretty much what I did. Um, but yeah, y'all, uh, white should be okay in this uh, end game. Actually, white, white actually has a really good advantage, a great advantage in this. All right, so let's go to chapter um well i say chapter three but it's not really a chapter all right y'all so look at this one I'll give y'all five seconds to uh, look this over look over everything um in this position i want you to pay attention i'll give y'all a hint man i want y'all to pay attention to undefended pieces i want you to pay attention to certain mating patterns i want you to pay attention to um you know where your king is at you know pay attention to all of that so when y'all look at this position on uh, like i said it's white to move uh, what would y'all do in this position? Give y'all five seconds to think about it. If y'all need to pause the video, pause the video. All right, guys. So when you look at this position, like I told you, y'all want to look at mating patterns. You want to look at uh, undefended pieces. You know things like that. Um, obviously, in this um, in this position, how many undefended pieces we have? Technically, we only have one. But is that really what we want to do? Just start taking pawns? No, there's actually a better move uh, in this position. So, and remember, I told you to pay attention to mating patterns. You know, obviously, if y'all was thinking about knight f seven, and eh, that wouldn't be uh, that wouldn't be the best move at all. The best move in this position would be bishop g8. Why bishop g8? Because, again, you're covering this square, right? And look at your pawns. Your pawns is covering um, the light squares. This bishop is covering this light square. So, and y'all get it. 2 plus 2 equals 4, right? So, okay, well, 1 plus 1 equals 2. But you have 1 light square is covered. This light square is covered. Wow, if the king can't move nowhere else or whatever, how can we get him? Obviously, knight s7 check me. So just think about that, y'all. Just think of all the pieces where the pieces is covering a certain square where the king can't move nowhere. And that probably could really help y'all out a lot more. You know, just think about it, okay? What piece is covering uh, a square for the king to close in, okay? My king can't go here because I have one pawn covering this square that's one i have a light square bishop on this light square covering this square that's two pieces covering that square okay okay the king can't move anywhere okay well shoot i wish i could have a piece that can made on. oh yes i do have a piece that can made on. knight s7 checkmate so when y'all look at a certain position y'all just got to look at you know certain squares specifics or weak squares i call it you want to concentrate on weak squares. A lot of pieces concentrate. When people play chess, they concentrate on pieces or whatever, which is cool. You could concentrate on like where the pieces move, but concentrate on the squares because I think that can really make y'all see the, the moves a lot easier and a lot deeper. Concentrate on the squares and um, concentrate on where the king uh, where uh, the king is limited to a certain square. So like this king's limited to this square, this king limited to this square. So that's why bishop g8 would be a move. Uh, be the best move and as you can see there's really nothing that black can do um in his position and even if he decides to go bishop f6 we have rook h7 checkmate as y'all can see which is another mating pattern so um again number one you know concentrate on weak squares concentrate on undefended peace concentrate on mating patterns you know concentrate on uh, pawn structures i hope this uh helped y'all out um, if y'all like this video, please like, share, comment, and also, y'all, don't forget to subscribe. Alright, y'all, peace out.